I've mentioned in previous uh, videos to, if you can, to ignore recursion, try to use just uh, other methods for solving the same problem. Well, sometimes you can't. Just for example, take a look at some uh, pictures I have. I have them in this, uh, this folder here. Some of these are my son, some are in Las Vegas. And I create some, uh, some other folders. So if I go into this folder, I see there's a picture here. And if I go into this folder, I see there's another folder. Go into that folder, I see another picture. <clears throat> well, we don't know how many folders are going to be inside of each folder. And so there's no way to tackle this without using recursion. Recursion uh, helps when you're writing or um, developing system utilities. If you wanted to go through and, for example, count how many files there were. Now I've went ahead and created this um, program because I, I don't normally write uh, recursion programs. And especially now with uh, some kind of utilities. I've had occasion to do it occasionally in programming, but not very often. In um, 13 years time, I maybe use recursion one time. So it's not a technique that's something you, you do on a day-to-day -day basis. The, um, in case you're curious, where I wrote the recursion at was in a, um, a macro. It was a Word uh, VBA uh, macro. I needed to open up, I think we had 1,000 or 5,000 Word documents. I don't remember how many now, it's been too long. But I needed to um, update the footer down at the bottom so that it was an ISO certification required us to have it all say the same thing in our in our um, procedures. Well, instead of opening up each one and changing them, I wrote a macro uh, for the for the customer or internal customer. Uh, they didn't want to open up every file and, cha and change it. But I wrote a macro to go through and open up every Word document, and these were in different folders, so it had to use uh, recursion. Anyway, um, this right here, we got import java.io.file. This will bring in the file so we can can use its um, methods and so forth. Down here, I declare a variable num set equal to zero. I don't need to set that equal to zero. Because right here, I set it equal to a value, and I call count files. And I say new file, and then passing in this. Now, when we say file, realize it could be an actual file, or it can be a directory. So it's a little bit misleading on that. Um, you can think of it as like file structure of some sort. Then this just prints out our answer. So down here, you see I got count files and file, and then I said lowercase file. This can be whatever you want to call it. Um, and then num equals zero, and then we check first, see if it's a directory. If it's a directory, then, well, we want to see what's inside that directory. Well, down here, this allows us to loop through all of our, our, all of our files. Uh, files.listfiles, this returns the entire list. For example, to begin with, this is the folder I'm, I'm in. And let me change this to a different view. This returns all of this and puts it into an array. And that array is called files. So um, then this loops through the, the, the array and one by one. And then this down here, um, the num equals num plus count files. So for each one of these, this count files goes back and calls this same uh, recursively calls this. And if it's just simply a file, like this down here, it'll add one to it. If it's a directory, it goes through the same same uh, setup. So it doesn't matter how many directories I have in here, it'll work. So, um, for example, assuming that it comes in in the same order that this does. The first one will be in my array. And when I say array, I'm talking about this one right here. The first one we'll run across is test, which is also a directory. So down here it checks to see if it's a directory, which it is. Then what's going to do is it's going to come back with the list of everything that's underneath it and go from there. <clears throat> really slick way. Uh, recursion is fantastic when we're talking about uh, system utilities. It makes it so much easier to work with some of these. Um, and I, I don't even know how you would try to do this if you didn't use recursion. And you see how clean and 
concise it is. Um, anyway, this is uh, an example of where you can use your recursion to count files. Now let me um, run this. It says I have 24. I got one there, one there, and then I got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So I got 24 files. Well, let me copy this picture of my son, just up as a cowboy. In one of these, drop it in. And now, if I run it, you see I got 25. So it goes through and handles this. This is how, um, if you got a website you go to, yeah, you got all these links underneath here. And if you want to write like a Google um, search engine, well, you want to index all these pages. How do you do it? Well, you have to go through every one of these links. And um, I don't know if I remember how to do this, but let's see. Tools, view source. Where's it at? There is view source. Well, it, it, you can search through here and look for the tags that go along with uh, hyperlinks. There's a. Why can't I find a one hyperlink? Um, maybe because I'm up there. Okay, get down to here. This um, I was trying to find a normal one, but I guess we can go with this. It's href. That refers to a link. So this would be a a file I'd want to open up. Well, once I open that file up, then I'd want to um go through all its files. It's like if I say um I don't know um transfer information. Within transfer information, there's a bunch of different links here. And that's how a search engine uh, works, is it uh, opens up the file, and then it goes through all the links inside that, and then goes to these, and goes to all the, the links inside of this. Now, the trick is, it's a little bit trickier than that. It's kind of a hard part. I've, I've worked on it, but I haven't come up with a complete program before. Um, after you go to this, if it points back to your first page, you have to make sure you don't throw it into an infinite loop. Uh, it's very easy to do with recursion. And you have to be careful on that. There's different ways of doing that, though. Anyway, that uh, gives you a, a real-world um, example of recursion. Um, now, I could have, instead of just counting these files, each one of these I could have opened up and searched within the file. So that's, that's where I'd be writing my own utility to um, not only recursively go through directories, but then to open up every file inside of that directory and look for something. So...